So I just finished making this chessboard for my daughter and son-in-law. It's about an inch, almost an inch and a half thick. Walnut, maple, with a paduk border and paduk spines. Uh, it's, it's a beast, it's heavy. The board itself is 18 by 18, which means I've got two and a quarter inch square. So it's a pretty big board. It doesn't fit into my planer, so I use my CNC to flatten it. Got two and a half inch borders of walnut. Be sure to stick around to the end. I'll let you know all the mistakes I made, plenty of them. So stick around and I'll show you how I did it. So I'm checking before I glue this up to make sure there's no problems with any of the joints. So to get to this point, I took five quarter stock, two 21 inch pieces of walnut and two of maple. So I now, now I had four pieces of wood to run through my jointer, first on this edge and then second on the face. So then I took those pieces over to the planer and ran them through with the jointed edge down. That way I had all of them at the same thickness. I took them over to my table saw, cut them into two and a quarter inch widths, and then I left the last piece wide. That way after glue up, it'll be a lot easier to square the whole thing up. Time for glue up. Time to test out my little glue roller. See how this thing works. Got some hardwood coals that I use. Get those going. They're covered in packing tape. I'm not going to tighten them all down yet. Now I'll get these cinched down. Now I'll take it over to my crosscut sled. So we're going to try to take off as, as little as possible. Set the stop block to two and a quarter. I meant to cut two of these a little wide. I had this much left over, so I could have cut them another half inch wide to help me square it up at the end, but so I got it wide one way and not the other. I'll just flip every other one. So this has to be perfect. Squares lined up. Sometimes it's hard to see the, the lines because of the squeeze out. The calls in. Okay, I'll come out here in the morning and have a chessboard. Okay, let's see how we did. Clean up the glue on this side. So you have to have a plan to flatten this, even though I use calls and everything else, it still needs to be flattened. Two and a quarter inch strips 
makes for an 18 inch board so it won't go through my planer. You can use a, a router with a sled to flatten it. Sanding is going to take forever with hardwood so I'm going to bring it over to my CNC and use it to flatten it. This is pretty flat already so I'm not going to have to go down too far. I'm going to use this inch and an eighth surfacing bit from Amana. I don't use this very often, but this is a time when I need it. Two and a quarter would be right about there. That's why I need to cut, and that's really hard to see. I'll sneak up on that mark. Now I'll flip it over. I should be able to set my stop at 18 and have a perfect two and a quarter inch square. We'll see. So I need to get the frames going. So the way you calculate how much wood you need for a miter cut is I, I have an 18 inch board. I want to put a two and a half inch wide frame around it. And the way you calculate that is you double the width so I have two and a half inch width that I want for the miter, five inches, and you add it to the width of your piece, so 18 inches. So I need a piece that's 23 inches long. I'll go 25 inches. Well, I know I'm going to get it right. Time to cut these into two and a half inch strips. But before I brought it over to the table saw, I jointed one edge. It was just perfectly flat. And then I put it through the thickness planer to get it closer to the thickness of the chessboard. I'm not worried about the other side because I'm going to flatten everything. Once the border is on the chessboard, then I'll flatten it with the CNC. Everything will be flattened together. Now I have a decision to make. I'm going to have walnut borders, but I want to put the strip between the chessboard and the border. Do I do paduke or cherry? Okay, for cutting thin strips, I've marked on here 1 8th, 3 16th, a quarter, and 16th increments. So now, with this thing set, my magnet, I move my fence over and consistently hit the same mark. Is right about 3 16 so I want it just a little wider than the 1 8 that I did on my last chessboard. Go ahead and glue this onto the walnut. Okay, it's time to get the miter sled out. Okay, time for the second cut on this side. The beauty of this system is all you have to do is measure your chessboard, cutting board, whatever you're putting border around, and then set that measurement with this 45 degree stop block. Can't be any simpler. So this is uh, 18 inches. Set my stop to 18. This is such a crucial step. I always take my time on this step. Measure, cut, and verify fit, and then I can move on to the next one. I make sure and mark all my pieces, which side they go to. As much as you want everything to be exact, it's generally not. This is woodworking after all. This one is like a, a 30 second under 18. Okay, once this gets clamped up, I think we'll be okay. Okay, time for glue up. To make it easier on myself, I'm only gonna do two pieces. I'll let it dry for till after dinner and then I'll come out and put the other two sides on. So 
Just makes it easier for glue up. Less stressful. Okay, it's been about four hours. Go ahead and get these clamped up onto the side so I can flatten this thing tomorrow. Putting these clamps on very lightly. Okay, let's see what we got. Now, after I clamped it up, I put some CA glue and some imperfections. I want this side to be my A side because the wood is a little bit lighter. I like that light look on the walnut. I like these little Jorgensen clamps. These really come in handy. I almost made this thing too big for my 24 inch clamps. That would have been terrible. I would have had to go buy some more clamps. Look, I have a couple issues. This will be corrected in leveling, flattening. I do have an issue with this miter right here, but I should be able to correct it. It's a good flat surface, and I don't, I don't have any issues the B side being flat. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down on my spoil board on my CNC and get the top side surface, and we'll see what we have. The CNC with a inch and an eighth surfacing bit. This is from Amana. This tool will get it done. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my CNC and we'll go ahead and flatten this board. First thing is getting this thing into my fence so I know it's square to the table. And I can't use any of my normal clamps that you would use on the top. I'm going to be surfacing the whole area. These cam levers work really well. So now this thing is in there solid. It's not going to go anywhere. I use a paper trick. Because of this big bit, I don't use my auto zero plate. It's getting a little bit of resistance. Now, locked down. Okay. So that's good for the Z. Zero out my Z. Now I can tell it to go to X, Y, zero. And it's ready. So I had to take a almost a tenth of an inch off, which is a lot for surfacing. Probably should have taken more off the borders at the planer during the sanding process. Yeah, it came out came out pretty nice, beefy. Well, I think we can all agree this miter looks terrible. This is the one corner that I had issues with. I'm going to show you how I can take care of that pretty easily. The glue in my finger. Sure gets worked in there really well. Now I have some walnut dust that I saved. I have walnut, maple, paduke all saved up just for this. Just taking this sawdust and working it into that crack. Just sand that down. There you go, you never know it was there. So I decided on putting splines into the miters. So I took this over to my splining jig, cut an eighth inch groove in here, and then I went over and did a thin strip of paduke, cut a couple just under eighth inch strips and then fit them into the slot. Glued them in there, took a flush cut saw and cut the edges off and then sanded it down. I used just my hand sander. I don't, I don't like using my orbital sander on the edges Sometimes it'll catch and round off the edges, and I didn't want to do that. I've sanded this down to 180. Before I sand it down to its final 320, I want to go ahead and put it back on it. I decided to do that so I can engrave it in the bottom. I'll just laser engrave it. So I've got this eighth inch plywood. It's pretty nice. It'll look nice with uh, some oil finish. I'm going to glue this onto the back. 
bevel the edges and then uh, we'll see what we got. But one of the biggest mistakes I made was engraving this with the intent on putting a maple inlay in here. I should not have tried to tackle that with the time limit I had to make this board for Christmas. should not have done that. I tried to go ahead and fill this with the black CA glue, and that was a mistake. It's worked well for not filling, but for engraving filling, don't ever try to use it. I had too many air bubbles in there, and it just looked terrible. What I should have done was practice my inlays more or filled the engraving with epoxy. I don't think the Paduk stood out as much as I like. With the tongue oil, it darkened everything up, and you could barely see the Paduk on the splines and on the border around the chessboard itself. On previous boards, I used armor seal, and I liked how the Paduk stood out with that armor seal versus the tongue oil darkened everything up a little too much for my taste. So some of the things I do like is, is the bevel I put all the way around. The bevel looks good. I like the backing that I put on here. This is eighth of an inch plywood. And then I bevel it as well. So when it sits on the table, you can't tell it's there. If you found this video helpful at all, please like and subscribe. At least hit the like button. That helps me out. And I appreciate your support.